millions of men around the world experience depression every year. Depression and suicidal ideation. I'm very critical of myself. We already are authentic. You can't not be authentic. You're just not in touch with it. Good looking guy is tall, dark, and handsome. And I'm like, well, I only have two out of three, so. <laughs> How do you practice self-care and self-acceptance as a man? None how men can be men. And let me share what I've learned with you. Men are having a self-care crisis. It's been happening for decades, but nobody was listening. Depression, mental health, and suicide are most experienced by men all around the world. Suicide is often a personal act and sometimes linked to mental health disorders. There is some commonality throughout specific countries. Certain environmental and cultural circumstances can be contributing factors to suicide. It is important to note that suicide is often underreported. The stigma associated with the act leads to many suicides being recorded as accidental deaths. Little public awareness and culturally accepted support make it hard to reach out before it's too late. Men's groups are growing, which can help in the short term, but fundamental change comes from inside. So how do you practice self-care and self-acceptance as a man? And what does it mean to man up? I'll be breaking down the six things you can change in your life right now to make yourself stronger. It took me more than 30 years to get here and let me share what I've learned with you. Millions of men around the world experience depression every year and it has become the silent killer. Men commit suicide at a rate four times higher than women, but these are just the big numbers. For patients. The United Nations says Africa needs to combat a suicide rate that is the highest in the world, yet remains widely unrecognized and often stigmatized. Six of the ten countries with the greatest suicide rates in the world are in Africa, and around 11 people per 100,000 per year die by suicide across Africa. That's higher than the global average of nine per 100,000 people, according to the World Health Organization. Untreated, undiagnosed, and unacknowledged mental health problems lead to alcohol abuse, antisocial behaviors, and a lack of self esteem. I should know, just like many young men who face mental health problems, I didn't have a strong father figure. My father committed suicide when I was a teenager. He struggled with anger, self control, and depression. That left me with a huge hole in my life. And I wondered what it meant to be a man and what the future held for me. It took me years to even accept that this may have been the cause of some of my problems. The first thing I needed to do was break through the stigma of needing help. The CDC's latest data reveals women are more likely than men to go to therapy. A 2020 survey found more than 12% of women received counseling in the previous 12 months. Studies have found that stigma drawn from perceived public perceptions is a huge barrier to men reaching out. This stigma starts with the force of masculinity. If you are a man, then you should know what masculinity is, either consciously or subconsciously. It's made up of all of those things that we are exposed to in the media that defines what it means to be a man. The most common traits include an aversion to vulnerability, control, and competition. The problem is that these traits often cause internalization, making men less likely to talk about their problems. Only one in six Australians with depression will get an effective treatment. Depression will be second only to cardiovascular disease in the next 20 years with regards to all death and all disability unless we do something radically different. Community stigma is deadly which is why rural areas have lower reported levels of depression and at the same time, much higher rates of suicide.
Even when I did, it's not easy to know what to do. How do you evolve? The social norms make men both fear shame and blame while still taking part in it. It's hard to know when or if you are allowed to be vulnerable, even with yourself. Many men in Western society have been forced to adopt coping strategies that are unhealthy and dysfunctional. Masculinity can be toxic, turning into misogyny, homophobia and violence. These are negative behaviors that are mimicked and pursued by young men, especially those lacking fathering. Toxic masculinity is applied to men who need to aggressively compete and dominate others. And it is a term used mainly by privileged men who position themselves against it to appear more progressive. This kind of condemnation has created a constellation of men's rights groups and movements. I didn't have that kind of privilege. I'm from a tiny island in the Indian Ocean called Mauritius. And we are a former colony and slave trading post that's been independent for less than 60 years. I came from no money and very few prospects. I believe that I'm the first in my family to break the close-minded mentality that had limited us for generations. I was able to open my mind and expose myself to the outside world. Being open is not a weakness, and talking about our problems can truly save lives. The antidote for harmful masculinity is healthy masculinity. This means taking charge of your life in all domains, physically, mentally, and societally. Healthy lifestyle practices are key, meaning regular exercise, not abusing substances, and opening yourself up to vulnerability. Particularly if you're a shy person who doesn't like putting another mate on the spot, but inevitably... This is where you can build strong foundations for yourself so that when life gets tough, you are resilient. It sounds simple on paper, but how do you get there? We live in an age of overconsumption. Food can be ordered with the click of a button, and pre-cooked meals are cheaper than ever. But these conveniences have a high cost. They have led many of us to an unhealthy lifestyle. Existing conditions that you might have, and there is truly a worry that when we come out of this pandemic, that there is a fear that more Americans will have things like high blood pressure, diabetes, and... We don't move enough, and we don't eat well. A bad diet can lead to obesity. Says common beliefs about obesity are all wrong. It is your turn to get on that scale. And diet shows, like The Biggest Loser. You lost 128 pounds. And feelings of isolation can lead to more stress. Both of these cause mental health issues. The food you put in your body is strongly tied to your mood. New field of study, nutritional psychiatry, looks at how diet can improve mental health. It could help patients shift from pharmaceuticals to food-based therapy. Your brain uses around 20% of the energy from your entire body. And different energy sources affect it in different ways. Glucose, which is found in carbohydrates like bread, rice, helps to keep our body temperature consistent and to field our muscle movements. If you don't have enough glucose in your blood, the results should appear within a few seconds. There we go, it's a little bit low, 3.6, I'll need to treat that with some glucose tablets. Then you will probably feel weak and lethargic, plus it's harder to concentrate. Once you have enough glucose in your body, it's important not to overconsume. When you feel hungry for that pizza on Uber Eats, or a Krispy Kreme donut... I'm out over the past five years, has helped us to double the revenue and double the EBITDA. There's more going on than your body asking for food. Eating foods with high carbohydrates produces serotonin, also known as the feel-good chemical. It plays an important role carrying messages through nerve cells, but the immediate effect on mood is more noticeable. If you want your brain to work optimally, your body's needs need to be met. Well, last night, I ate an entire pizza by myself, and now I feel sad. This is why eating sweet comfort foods can boost your mood. On the flip side, having a balanced diet made up of vegetables, fruits, poultry, and nuts has been associated with lowered risks of depression. Choosing what fuel to put in your body is one thing. The next thing to do is to move it. Physical exercise reduces mental health problems is always a good idea. 
It's generally recommended to exercise at least 30 minutes per day. But to be honest, as long as you are getting out and moving, you will feel great benefits. Walking is the easiest way to get your body moving. Our ancestors have been doing it for millions of years, and you'll find that a breath of fresh air and a small walk can change your whole mentality. Let's go. There has never been as much media available as today. Traditional television broadcasting has given way to streaming platforms. And now, with handheld devices and addicting series, non-stop stimulation in an infinite virtual playground. What's up, Daddy? How you doing, Grandpa? Everything has been kind of transformed to this 2D world. It's easy to plug in and lose hours. Following more than 11,000 children over a decade. In early testing, researchers found significant differences in brain chemistry for kids who had at least seven hours of screen time a day. And streaming isn't the only thing competing for attention. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter have become much more than places to socialize. About half of Americans report that they get their news from social media. Adults spend an average of four hours on their phone a day. Let's look at this 30 seconds we filmed outside Oxford Circus earlier today. All the white flashes are the phones people are on. And more than two thirds have experienced feeling anxiety when it's been misplaced. I know that when I've spent too much time scrolling, I feel less connected to the things around me. It becomes harder and harder to go outside and have genuine interactions. That's because the applications on our devices help release dopamine. Feeling even worse than before. The universal symptoms of dopamine withdrawal include anxiety, irritability, insomnia, low self-esteem, and depression. But that next hit probably won't be as rewarding. Which is the same chemical released when you have sex, after you exercise, or when you have positive social interactions. Social media can exploit the parts of our brain that get us to connect with other humans. Our brains get us to make those human connections by releasing dopamine in the reward pathway. Social media applications hijack the reward system through notifications, which, after a certain amount of time, is trained by your brain to release dopamine. But like anything, the good feeling can't last forever. It causes an addictive relationship with phones. And apart from directing our attention away from more important aspects of life, overconsumption leads to mental health problems. It might be the same chemical, but nothing will feel as good as getting some real-world exercise or meeting up with someone you love. Scrolling through posts from strangers is not a healthy way to spend time. Studies have found that during the pandemic, Increased media consumption led to higher levels of anxiety and depression. The answer is clear. Switch off your phone more to become happier. But it is easier said than done. The first thing to do on a path to self-care is to get started. It turns out it's the hardest part too. If you've had a nagging thought in the back of your mind about starting to exercise, picking up a hobby, taking time for yourself, or putting yourself out there, then start now. There are always going to be excuses and reasons to put things off. You won't regret jumping in head first. The experience of starting something new is exhilarating, and it will give you a boost in life no matter what it is. The number one reason that we don't try something new is that we are afraid. Fear cripples us from enjoying things. Insecurity and anxiety are products of fear, and they are the biggest reason why there is a crisis in men's health right now. 
All of these things might sound like insurmountable obstacles, so it's important not to take on everything at once. You are not going to snap your fingers and change everything about your life overnight. Instead, focus on picking up one thing first. If you have been meaning to exercise more, then do it, even if it's just a few minutes a day. Achieving something, even if it's small, will add value to your life. These small wins will build momentum and snowball into big changes. You don't have to be the smartest person in the world to make a difference. You just have to be willing to serve. I was in my 20s when I decided to really turn my life around. I had been through a lot of difficulties. Two of my close friends died just six weeks apart, both by suicide and I was living in a foreign country almost totally alone, but I was motivated by my tiny auntie who told me to just get on with it. She gave me a jolt and told me to stop feeling sorry for myself, and I did. Sometimes the best thing to do is not think too much. We are surrounded by social pressures. There are pressures for societal values and practices. Many of them are presented as normal, that we never really reflect on them. But finding the strength to say no can be revolutionary for you. Whether it's going out for weekend beers or committing to an emotionally draining family get-together, saying no thank you will transform your life. First of all, it will help to protect your schedule. That means that you can build a solid, healthy schedule that includes all the things you want to get done each day. Instead of pushing things to tomorrow, try to get into a rhythm where you practice habits until they become ingrained. You will find that your time becomes filled with things you want to do, and your ability to sleep, eat, and exercise will be radically improved. If it takes you routinely more than 30 minutes to fall asleep and you're awake uh, more than 30 minutes during the course of the night, you would fall in the insomnia category. Getting enough sleep is crucial. And that means starting your daily routine the night before. Switch off your phone an hour before going to bed instead of scrolling before you roll over to sleep. In the morning, do the same. Don't look at your phone for the first half hour. Try and get some sunlight and find your ritual you might feel like the black sheep going against the norm. Saying no to alcohol, declining invitations to go out and party, and turning down social events can be some of the most challenging things to do. But the goals you set for yourself will become much more achievable. And with time, the people who truly care will respect your decisions. I've built a circle of positive people around me who don't depend on going out to clubs, drinking alcohol or destructive behavior to have fun. It's not easy to begin with, but trust me, it's worth it. You'll find people who truly want you to succeed. Next, the emotional part. For most men, this is going to be the hardest component of self-care. And the most important thing is to stop internalizing feelings. And the easiest way to get started is by journaling your emotions. Whenever you feel overwhelmed, anxious, or any other emotions, write them down. Keeping a journal with you can be helpful too. You need to express yourself in a non-destructive way and ask how your emotions are serving you. Emotions are a part of life. No matter who you are, there are going to be ups and downs along the way. Um, writing helps me release my, uh, my pent-up thoughts and emotions and it's free and it reduces some of the scatteredness in my head and it allows me to critically capture the thoughts and emotions and process them. Um, and I feel like it gave me back control of some of the things that were going on. Most people, especially men, have to deal with anger issues. Anger can come in many forms, including frustration and resentment. If we don't address this, then it threatens to explode on other people, especially our loved ones. But it's not only others who suffer. Our anger is often turned inwards, making us feel that we are not good enough. Part of changing this is learning where we come from and why we act the way we do. I thought I was a good man in a lot of ways, but there are certain certain traits that I don't, I don't want to repeat because I didn't, it didn't feel that good being on the receiving end of that, and I don't want to. 
Do you find that some of your behavior might remind you of your father or your mother? My upbringing was pretty dysfunctional. I love both my parents, but the way my father treated our family was not good for anyone. It wasn't just the people around him who suffered. He internalized a lot of negative emotions until it was too much and too late. Over the years, I've had to look at myself and recognize all the things that come from my parents. That means the good and the bad. If possible, talking to friends, family and a professional is going to be one of the best ways to understand yourself. The more you talk, the more things you will uncover. It's not always about what the other person knows. Sometimes it's just having someone to share things with out loud. Humans are naturally social. No matter how well you are sticking to your own routine and achieving, you'll find a deep desire to connect. This shouldn't be ignored. This goes back hundreds of thousands of years. Hunter-gatherer groups who usually made up of around 100 people. And there's a good reason for it. The Dunbar number is an estimation that humans can maintain a maximum of 150 stable relationships. It's Dunbar's number, and I thank whoever created that acronym. I have no idea who did it. It just appeared out of the blue on the internet. Wonderful thing, the internet. So having thousands of friends on social media doesn't mean much. Of those, it's estimated that a close inner circle of around five people is normal. We all need a support system. And it's this inner circle that will give it to us. They are the people that you should be able to share your hopes, your troubles and life with. And if your friends don't understand why you want to change for the better, look for other friends. Groups, sports and online communities can help with this. Hello, my name is Martin Matthews and I'm the regional coordinator in Southeast. This will help in more ways than you think not just because of what you get from the community, but also how you serve the community. It's important to give back. Whether it's volunteering, teaching, or just helping a family member out, try to do something for others. Some of these may not sound like self-care, but they all have scientifically proven benefits for mental health and self-acceptance. Each person is different and every journey is unique. There is no one formula for taking care of yourself, but by putting into practice these six things, you will learn to find the things you really value and need in life. Focus on your diet. What you eat is what you are. Get started. It's the hardest part of any activity. Learn to say no. It will teach you to be strong and reclaim your time. Understand your emotions. Write down and talk about what you're feeling to improve your behavior. And find your community. Family, friends, and social groups are essential during this human experience that we call life. Through my journey, I've discovered these things to be the most helpful. But it's crucial to acknowledge that you can't go through it alone. The good news is there are plenty of people out there for you. Maybe I'm your first connection.